graduated PhD in mathematics from University of Pisa, Italy in to December 2004, spent years postdoc in various universities in France. Since 2007, have worked in various American universities lecture of, of mathematics. In this moment, Ilya teaches mathematics at Valencia College and at chemistry at University of Central Florida. I just sent a student there, all right, great. Graduated with BS in aerospace engineering from UCF in May 2015, congratulations. Uh, graduated with a BS in chemistry from UCF in August 2015. Studying for a second PhD in chemistry at UCF, speaks five languages, English, French, Italian, Spanish, and Albanian. All right. <laughs> thank you, Professor. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, this yeah, you, tell you. Yes, you. You, you can just use it just like this. Yeah, thanks. Like right there. Uh, right. This is the plan. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Ilya Tolyi. Thank you. So, uh, a new propulsion paradigm is proposed, proposed different from uh, Tsiolkovsky paradigm. Uh, the Tsiolkovsky paradigm is that you carry with you the mass that you will uh, eject in order to um, generate the uh, moment, momentum which pushes you forward. A practical realization of this paradigm is proposed. There, are, it comes loaded with a variety of technical problems, and we propose solutions for uh, them all. No technological le leap is needed, just improvements of uh, current technologies. Can realistically shorten the travel to Mars uh, to one month for humans and much less for cargo. And it is very important uh, that uh, this uh, paradigm to have uh, mid-term and uh, short-term applications, otherwise nobody is going to uh, put the money for uh, straight out for uh, Alpha Centauri. Oh, sorry. Uh, so the Tsiolkovsky paradigm is uh, the, rock, the rocket carries the mass with it, which he, it expels with force, as much force as uh, you possibly can, and generate momentum. Uh, based on uh, uh, Newton's uh, law of, mo of motion. And this is the famous rocket uh, equation. And uh, this equation is cursed by math. That's what I hear all the time around. And therefore, nothing can be done to lift the spell, because math is math. And uh, need a fuel tank the size of Jupiter in order to reach uh, Alpha Centauri. Reasonable. A new paradigm, uh, none of the mass to be thrown away is carried by the uh, rocket at launch. Uh, it is collected along the way, and the rocket car only carries a controllable uh, nuclear source of heat. It uh, collects air, heats it up without chemical reaction, and uh, ejects it, expands, expands it in order to generate thrust. Practical realization of the paradigm, it sounds nice in theory. Uh, one way is uh, how to do it, this is to go round and round the Earth at higher and higher velocities and higher and higher altitudes in order to keep constant the uh, mass flow rate. At some point, uh, eject from Earth, enter Jupiter orbit, and do the same uh, around Jupiter. Collect uh, hydrogen and uh, helium from there, heat it up, eject it in order to go faster and faster. Jupiter offer, offers many advantages as compared to Earth because it has a much smaller curvature and bigger gravity, and these are actually uh, positives, very good things. This propulsion model obviously does not uh, uh, obey the Tsiolkovsky equation, and hence, therefore, it is not cursed by math. It is a reasonable assumption to think that uh, probes will go first there and humans will go second. It is safe, uh, therefore, uh, we can build probes that can take 50 g ac uh, acceleration. This is not an exaggerated uh, requirement. Uh, if the probe goes with this much acceleration for uh, one week around Jupiter, it reaches about the speed of light. It can uh, launch, then eject towards Alpha Centauri, where it reaches in about five years. Uh, now there are escape force, among many problems that we will uh, have to face is escape forces. Tangential and centrifugal uh, forces are a big problem. They can be moderated through negative uh, lift. 
the atmosphere becomes exponentially thinner with altitude. This is actually a very welcome uh, phenomenon. Why so? Because in order to keep the same mass flow rate, you will have to go up very much, increase uh, altitude. And uh, this ex uh, absorbs big part of the centrifugal uh, and uh, tangential escape forces. Then uh, one of the most uh, attractive uh, features would be to go to Mars in uh, one month. Uh, so if it has mid-term and uh, short-term benefits, it would be very welcome because nobody is going to go straight out and um, uh, fi uh, fund this, this probe for Alpha Centauri without uh, the middle steps. So mid-term benefits would be Mars. Uh, the fact that you spend more time around Earth while you are gaining uh, kinetic energy is actually welcome. In the case that uh, the mission um, uh, fails, there uh, are plenty of scenarios, it is easier to abort when you are around Earth than to abort in, uh, in uh, uh, outer space. So it is a fair to us, uh, like a, a calculation of uh, distance Earth to Mars. And then uh, assuming a generic uh, Hoffman transfer orbit would be this much meters, which me means well, in million kilometers or whatever. Uh, uh, to cover this in one month, we would need 38 uh, kilometers per second uh, velocity, which uh, with two, uh, 2 G, uh, we would need 32 minutes. It is not much to endure 32, mi uh, 32 minutes of 2 G for a human. And uh, a little more uh, delta V budget might be needed for the loss of delta V that you have uh, from the altitude to outer, outside Earth. That could be included in calculations. And anyway, it is less than what you need from uh, st uh, starting from a stationary point on Earth. And short-term benefits would be aerodynamics. Basically, we do not know much on aerodynamics beyond uh, Mach 6. And we, uh, all experiments that they perform nowadays in aerodynamics with Big Mac, they just make a two inch thick uh, metal sheet, put it in front of a tank, and this tank is compressed so much that this two inch uh, thick will break, which means metal uh, is a lot of pressure. And those uh, experiments with uh, more than six Mac, they last like nanoseconds. All you can uh, get data from that experiment. Whereas with this, it would last uh, for as much as you want, and therefore, you would uh, make uh, a lot of uh, experiments. And obviously, new phenomena could appear, which we don't account for them. They could be helpful or uh, unhelpful. Could go either way, and we don't know that. Scramjet, uh, this is a schematic of scramjet. And uh, nuclear heating takes place, place instead of uh, chemical reaction, which is actually much, much better than chemical reaction. By the way, I studied the chemical reactions and uh, in a uh, Mars Society talk, I was to propose a few liquid oxygen at room temperature and pressure and uh, solid uh, nitrogen, but uh, my schedule was so jammed. And I, I, I again apologize to them for that. Uh, launching from rest, it would be very desirable if you can get the first three Mac, for example, in some other different way than uh, most of the kinetic energy that you are getting. Why is that? For reasons of design. If you can have that, your design would be way simpler. Now, there are different approaches how to get those three Mac. We could get it in traditional way, which they are doing now. Put a fan in front of the scramjet until you get three Mac and uh, on and on. Maybe then drop the Mac, the, the fan. But my favorite approach would be this, have a 25 kilometer traditional electrical rail, which I mean traditional, traditional repeat, which means nothing fancy, and uh, mount this spacecraft on top of traditional locomotives, launch it for uh, uh, 55 seconds with uh, 3G, and then you got the first three map. Then take off, then turn on uh, all the, the rest of the process. 
the rail could be used for uh, other purposes. So the mass flow rate mm, uh, through the uh, scamjet, or whatever you want to call it, remains constant. It is uh, also the flow outside remains constant as a mass. So it is a fair assumption that the uh, rate of increase of heat, aerodynamic heat, is more or less constant, or it won't go wild. Uh, so we could use Peltier effect in order to cool this down. We need electricity for that. A small uh, turbine could be mounted in the expanding section, really small, uh, could take away two or three percent of the energy from uh, the propulsion. Uh, you generate electricity with that, and this electricity through Peltier effect would uh, cool the rest of the whole of uh, the, the spacecraft. Therefore, the aerodynamic, this uh, part could be used even in uh, uh, designs that they use today. And uh, stability is also another uh, big problem. At low velocity, you have to have center of mass close to uh, aerodynamic center, which here a uh, center of pressure, they are different but anyway. At high velocity, you have to have them far away. Why is that? If you have them far away uh, from uh, at low velocity, it is, the spacecraft is too stable, way too stable. You don't have any maneuvering power or anything. If you have them close at high velocity, it is too uncontrollable. It gets out of control, turns on itself and uh, everything. It disintegrates eventually. And if you are to go from uh, low Mach to such high Mach that we are talking about, you have to have some movable aerodynamic center. It can go, uh, like, uh, it is not reasonable to have it fixed. Uh, have a uh, way to move back the aerodynamic center, launch something with a cable behind the spacecraft. This pro provides stability in uh, two ways. First, by moving back the aerodynamic center of the system. And the other way that it proves stability is because it creates a negative feedback moment in the, end, in the other end. This is negative feedback. As the object tends to go up, uh, the negative feedback will uh, move it uh, down and on and on this way. And this stabilizes the, the spacecraft by both the means, by moving the... And in this context, drag is quite welcome because more drag creates more moment to stabilize the, the spacecraft. Comparison to other models, no leap of technology are needed, no time <coughs> ripples, no time dilatation, no time uh, warp, warp, sorry for the typo. Uh, no new materials, the aerodynamic cooling, as we said before, could be used in uh, other contexts. The traditional chemical rockets could, uh, do have the potential to bring us to Mars. This model e wins in size, in time, in cost effectiveness. Robustness, uh, the spacecraft model is quite sturdy, flexible, non-selective. Uh, it is quite important this is not non-selective. On Earth, it finds uh, oxygen, nitrogen, uses that. On Jupiter, it finds hydrogen, uh, uh, helium, uses that. On Mars, it uses carbon dioxide. And what is very important in this is that it obliterates needs of, the need of, for uh, fuel production space. Uh, you want to come back from there, you just, uh, on Mars, use uh, carbon dioxide there, heat it up, eject it, and uh, you have the fuel there. And they have made so many projects how to produce it there. Mesosphere I considered, and uh, uh, meso mesosphere of uh, Earth, anyway. Uh, just one more idea on how to uh, bring back uh, Tsiolkovsky in miniature, not as uh, forceful as it was before. <laughs> At uh, 80 kilometers, we have uh, 100 Pascal of pressure and 130 Kelvin of temperature. These conditions are close to liquefying temperature and pressure of uh, nitrogen and oxygen. A big empty tank could be carried from departure. At that altitude, instead of increasing altitude, you could actually gather mass. 
it's very easy to liquefy it by, for example, summer pressure. That ha doesn't have to be collected at, uh, ambient pr at, at uh, sea level pressure. Increase some pressure or decrease temperature again through Peltier effect. And Tsiolkovsky uh, uh, equation comes back, obviously, but it is at a much smaller size and could add another extra 10 kilometers per second to the overall velocity that you have. By the way, the 30, 38 kilometers per second that we said before, you just could roll for some longer around Earth and gain some more, uh, if you wish so. This is especially relevant for trips to Mars, obviously not for trips to Alpha Centauri. Uh, the spacecraft is uh, designed to contain wings, rudders, canards, uh, and the new aerodynamic device. Uh, further improvement could be done by heating uh, earth gases so that they uh, break into elemental form. Then in the expansion phase, they recombine again. The first phase was endothermic, which is kind of cooling. You cool the uh, nuclear reactor. Then in expansion, it becomes exothermic because they recombine at some lower temperature. Therefore, they release the heat that they absorbed in the nuclear reactor and provide for some uh, more advantages. And uh, uh, gravity break would be used uh, in uh, proximity uh, of Alpha Centauri. The current uh, time frame for Alpha Centauri is 73,000 years. This could bring it, uh, could bring uh, 14,000 times improvement. Uh, as we said before, the technological gap with the previous models is uh, trivial, with the other models that I have read around. It is possible to stay fixed at an altitude, which would, uh, and stay there, would actually increase the uh, aerodynamic heating. But if that's affordable, you can stay there for whatever reasons. The gas clouds uh, beyond the sun were considered, but, uh, including the gas uh, cloud that we are now, uh, and at present it proves of no benefit. Thank you very much for your attention.